I investigated uh, generosity in the money domain, uh, so people divided money between each other, and I also investigated uh, generosity in the non-monetary domain. I was inspired by two observations. The first came from my personal observations of uh, people being reluctant in helping with money. You know, when they are asked um, uh, some money from friends or strangers, they are a bit reluctant to give money away. On the other hand, when they are asked about their time and effort, for instance, in painting a friend's house or uh, showing the way to a stranger uh, or uh, carrying a uh, heavy luggage and uh, they are very happy to help uh, much more than in the case of uh, money so to say and the second observation uh, was coming from the economics literature actually uh, in particular the economic experiments use um, money as an incentive and it's more or less always the case and um, I thought maybe the decisions could interact with the type of incentive used and I would like to, I want to investigate a different sort of incentive which was um, uh, pain. Um, so I use a dictator game which is a common game in economic, uh, economic experiments to measure generosity. So you can imagine for instance there's a person and there's a cherry pie in front of her and uh, she would like to divide this cherry pie between herself and another person. That's basically the main idea of the dictator game. So I investigated this in the money domain and in the pain domain. And in the money domain, um, people divide a given duration, um, sorry, a given amount of money between themselves and another person. So something like 10 euros, for instance. And in the pain domain, people divide a given duration of listening, uh, a painful sound between themselves and another person. So for instance, if they have 20 minutes to listen to this um, painful sound, they divide the duration between themselves and the second person. First thing I found was that people were more generous in the pain domain than in the money domain. So in the pain domain, um, people were going generally for the 50-50. So uh, listening half of the sounds themselves and listen, uh, giving the other half to the other person. On the other hand, in the money domain, um, people were taking most of the money to themselves and giving little to the others. And uh, one interesting result was that um, there were even people in, um, that take more of the painful sound to themselves and give less to the others. These guys we call uh, hyper-altruists. Uh, that is not something uh, we see generally in the uh, money domain decisions in dictator games. That's also uh, not what I have observed uh, in my data. And uh, secondly, uh, I investigated several reasons for why uh, we observe these differences in generosity in pain and money uh, domains. And um, the, more prom the most promising uh, explanation was social norms. So uh, it seems that uh, people actually uh, have distinct social norms of giving when it comes to a non-monetary thing such as pain uh, compared to money. And these differences in the social norms of giving could explain why people were giving uh, more or being more generous in the pain domain compared to the money domain. Social norms are the rules of the game, right? And we are uh, social animals, so we want to play by the rules of the game. So, of course, in real life, we are observed by other people, right? Uh, and uh, we could be, uh, you know, we could be punished by not following the social norm if we could litter. I mean, there is uh, somebody giving us a bad eye, basically, when we litter, is obviously one sort of punishment. But in some smaller societies with uh, bigger violations of social norms, it could even go uh, to ostracization of the, um, of the person from society. But um, the, the question maybe to ask is that why do we follow social norms in anonymity when other people are not observing us? And uh, one answer I could give is basically that uh, we interna internalize these social norms so that when there's nobody around us, we still don't uh, put the garbage on the ground. So the main takeaway is that uh, people are more generous when it comes to a non-monetary domain than with money. So what can the NGOs learn from these results? Um, we can talk about two different topics, one being the charitable giving, the other one being uh, fighting against climate change. Uh, so for charitable giving, one way to go is that it's uh, to ask about people's time and to volunteer instead of uh, asking money from them. So my results would hint that that's a better strategy that will lead them lead to be more generous. And uh, when it comes to climate change, 
we can ask for from people to take measures at home such as lowering heating or recycling and uh, things that they can actually do with their time and efforts instead of asking um, to buy carbon offsets for, for their emissions.